Professor Sir Michael Atia, Fields Medalist and a member of the ICTS Advisory Board, unfortunately could not be present here today. We bring you a video recording with a message from Sir Michael. I'm glad to be here with you for this great event, even if age and infirmity mean that I'm only here electronically. But my son, who always looks to a sustainable future, tells me that to save time, money and CO2, such electronic appearances, perhaps enhanced to 3D, will become the norm. So it is appropriate that a new centre, designed for the future, should be inaugurated in this way. It also reminds us how mathematical science, through Maxwell's equations of electromagnetism, underpins the technology of our era. India has a rich and subtle cultural past, which includes great periods in the development of arithmetic, from the humble but crucial decimal system to the higher reaches of number theory. In more recent times, it produced the remarkable genius of Ramarujan, whose fame continues to grow and is embodied in the movie, currently being filmed in Trinity College, Cambridge, the home of Isaac Newton. India has also produced Nobel laureates, such as Subramanian Chandrasekhar in astronomy, Sir C. V. Raman in physics, Amartya Sen in economics, and Venkataman Ramakrishnan in biology. While I have no direct connection with Raman, I did visit his famous lab here in Bangalore. I clearly remember the impression left on me by one of his papers, which starts off by saying, from my own collection of diamonds, I've been led to the following conclusions. But I'm glad to say that the other three, together with Ramanujan, were all fellows of my own college, Trinity. When the President of India visited us in Trinity some years ago, he was even more impressed by the names of Jawaharlal Nehru and the famous cricketer Ranjit Sinji. The ICTS, whose inauguration we are celebrating today, is a branch of the Tata Institute in Mumbai. I visited the TIFR many times over the years and got to know the key mathematical figures there, including S. Chandrasekharan, M. S. Narasiman, and C. S. Seshadri. Many of their students came to work with me in Oxford and Princeton, notably the brilliant mathematician V. J. Padoti, whose life paralleled that of Ramanujan, dying at the early age of 32. I also got to know a young physicist, Spenta Wadja, happily still alive, who has been the driving force behind the establishment of the ICTS. The fact that I had physics friends is an indication that the frontiers between disciplines were breaking down. This has become the main feature of our times. The old rigid disciplines of the past are giving way to a much more fluid scene, which is why the ICTS is the right body for the future. The future belongs to the young, and the science that is now emerging will affect the lives of everyone on the planet. The ICTS has a noble task, that of providing the right atmosphere to inspire the next generation of scientists. When I was a young man, in 1954, I heard the great German mathematician Hermann Weyl eulogize the field medalists by saying that their work showed that the old, gnarled tree of mathematics was still full of the sap of life. I am happy to end on that cheerful note.